want to start by getting right to my scripture. And uh, the scripture for those of you who brought your Bibles, Matthew, New Testament. Matthew 13, we're going to start around verse 24. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, I brought mine, so I can look here. I don't like to turn my back on everybody. I've, I've seen them throw, and I could get hurt. Um, so, Matthew 13, verse 24. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Thank you for the lights for us old eyes. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But, the mar but that night, as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat and then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Well, should we pull out the weeds, they ask? No, he replied, you'll uproot the weed if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them into bundles, burn them, and to put the wheat in the barn. Before I go any further, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is true. It was true. It is true. And it will always be true. Father, thank you that we have ears to hear and we are ready to receive from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Who in this house is walking in a season of victory? Okay. Things are going along smoothly for you. All right, you have got your kids doing all the right stuff. Whoa, laughter. I didn't expect that. Man, you, your wife, man, just told you that everything you did yesterday was right on target, and she appreciates it. Whoa. <laughs> oh, we'll talk later. <laughs> and the police pulled you over to tell you what a great driver you were, <laughs> right? Do I have anybody who's walking in that season of victory? Oh, come on. I am. Anybody out there walking in a season of trials? Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you kids are kind of messing up a little bit. Maybe just perhaps you started that new diet and you've gained 10 pounds. That's a problem, okay? And we need to review the diet. But the truth in this is that we are all walking in a season of victory. And we're also walking in a season of trial. We got them both, okay? They are both active and looking for us. And the question is, what's your perspective? Are you operating out of an, a perspective of abundance or a perspective of lack? It's up to you. You can decide how you're going to handle it. And you're looking at me and saying, all right, I get it, but aren't you supposed to be in the back? I mean, this is the wheat and the weeds. Everybody's heard this. This is back for the kids. Well, I'm going to ask you to bear with me because maybe somebody here hasn't heard this before. And just maybe you'll hear something in a different way than you've heard it before, and it might hit a, a different tone with you. So indulge me as we dig into the word. Start in verse 24. Starts with the kingdom of heaven is like... And I had to laugh because Pastor Josue set that up so nicely. The kingdom of heaven is like, yes, in my Bible, that's in red. Jesus is about to tell me what the kingdom of heaven is like. I better wake up 
and pay attention because I need to know this. The word goes on and it says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed. Anybody in this room ever sowed good seed? Come on, let's see some hands. I know you have. Seriously, how many have ever helped a friend in need? Right? How many have signed up for the meal train and provided a meal for someone in this house? Okay? That is an awesome way to do that. And we thank Angie for helping oversee that and Monica. I don't see Monica. Did she go to Florida already? Okay. We thank them for helping to organize that, okay? It's such a great thing. It's a great, easy way for us to sow some seed. Maybe you couldn't do that, so you just listen to somebody who's struggling. Folks, we have no idea how important that is, just to be an ear for people when they're going through the trials of life. What I want you to get through from this right now is I'm talking about sowing seed, and notice I haven't said one thing about money. Too many people think that when somebody gets up here and talks about sowing seed, what they're talking about is money. That's not it. God has planted seed within each and every one of us, and the question is, what are you doing with the seed that's inside you? Are you sowing it or are you hoarding it? Okay, We are called to be seed sowers, so we better be doing it. Um, mm. Okay, scripture goes on in verse 25, but at night, while the workers slept, his enemies came and planted weeds among the wheat and slipped away. Has anyone ever planted weeds in your wheat field? I gotta be careful, I wanted to make sure I didn't say plant weed in your wheat field, you know? That, that's a whole nother problem, okay? Yeah. Has anybody ever planted weeds in your wheat field? I'm going to give you a real simple example in my life, and it was not a big deal to anybody but probably me. Everybody knows I love sports. I was coaching kids. And when I coached kids, I'd teach them how to pitch. I had some people give me some instruction. I wanted to pass that on. And so I would take aside those who wanted to do that, and I'd try to teach them some basic mechanics on how to pitch. God bless you. And I would send the boy home, and they'd come back to the next practice or the game, and it was like I'd never said a word to them. They had no clue. They were totally doing something totally different. And when I asked them about it, they said, oh, well, I was watching a major league game, and I saw this pitcher, and here's how he did it. He didn't do what you said. The major leaguers were planting weeds in my wheat field. <laughs> Okay? I didn't like it. The point is that Satan's going to use the darkness. That's what he does. He doesn't, if we see him coming, we know how to put up our defenses. We know how to be prepared. So the scripture is telling us that he's coming under the cover of darkness. He's going to plant those seeds and then he's going to slip away and then leave us to deal with what's left. In life, that happens. In life, we're going to go out there and we may plant some seeds in somebody's life. And somebody else may cut into that same person's ear and say, did you know that Pastor Jeff lied on his taxes? I didn't, by the way. <laughs> My wife does the taxes. She lied. Um, <laughs> Oh, this is live. <laughs> I'll visit you at the federal pen, honey. <laughs> that wasn't in any of the practice, was it? No. Wow. Thank you. Um, where was I? I guess you go out and you do something nice and somebody goes behind your back and says something negative about you and they're planting weeds in your wheat field, okay? It happens in our lives. Verse 26, when the crops began to grow and produce grain, the, the weeds grew also. 
I want you to get out of that is there's a lag time. You don't put that seed in the ground and before your finger comes off the dirt, it starts growing. It takes some time. What's that tell you? That tells you that by the time you see weeds in your life, those seeds have been planted some time ago. They've been around for a while. Verse 27, the farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted the good seeds is full of weeds. Where'd they come from? What are those workers focused on? The weeds. The weeds. They couldn't tell him anything about what's going on with his wheat. They focused on the weeds. They're looking at the bad side. We need, sometimes when the weeds come up in our lives, they can overtake us, right? We see the weeds because they seem to be all around us. And sometimes when you see all these weeds in your life, it's easy to get demoralized, depressed, beaten down. And when that happens, we tend to stop sowing our seed. What happens to a garden when you stop sowing seed? The weeds take over. I can tell you that for, for a fact because I had a garden at our house a few years ago and Julie refused to let me be, bring a picture of it because it's that ugly. <laughs> okay? I haven't held, had that garden continue for a couple years and the weeds have taken over, and it's all because I stopped taking care of my garden. Amen. <sighs> so what else were the workers saying? I like to call this the I thought portion of the show here. I thought. The workers said, I thought you planted good seed. I thought that you knew what you were doing and you had the soil prepared. I thought you were a Christian. I thought that you worked hard at your job. I thought you raised your kids right. And you hear that at the times when things aren't going right at the time when the weeds come up and you've lost your job or your kids are acting out. And that's what you hear. What's really sad is that we will be judged by the world for everything that grows in our garden. People will look in the garden of our lives and judge us based on what they see. They think for some reason that because we profess to be a Christian that perhaps we shouldn't have weeds in our garden. That we shouldn't have the problems that they have. Folks, we have hope. We also have problems. All right? When they see that, when they see the weeds crop up in the gardens of our lives, they look at it and they use it as, as their proof that God doesn't really love you or that maybe God is punishing you or worse yet, that God doesn't even exist all because they see weeds in our garden. Every one of us knows that God did not promise us a garden without weeds. We are going to have the trials in our life. And the question is, what are we going to do with them? So how did the farmer respond to this guy, these guys about where they come from? Verse 28. He responded the way most of us respond when somebody points something out to us. An enemy has done this. What's the first thing many of us tend to do when somebody says, hey, 
What's going on? I look for somebody to blame, right? I didn't do it. Julie did it. It was her fault. It wasn't my fault. It was my company's fault. They downsized and they got rid of me. It's all on them. It's not my fault at all. This is as old as time, right? Adam, it was that woman you gave me. Eve, it was that serpent. Yeah, we're quick to look to blame somebody else, but we're not so quick to examine ourselves just in case maybe there's something that we have to do with it. Understand that weeds can be fruit. They can be the bad fruit of our own bad decisions. And the question is, are we willing to look at ourselves and say, hey, this one's on me. I made a mistake. I made a bad choice. And because of my bad choice, now I have weeds to deal with. Anybody else here is, oh, how do I say this, as parsimonious as I am? Parsimonious is that $5 word that means cheap. Okay? Okay. I learned that a lot of years ago. Yeah, I, don't help your neighbor put their hand up. Okay, Wives, don't tell your husband to raise his hand. He knows it and he's proud of it. I'm so cheap that when I'd go out and get grass seed, I'd buy the cheap stuff. Right? All I'm looking for is grass. I don't need Scott's Lawn or whoever else. Maybe we can start getting... Scott's Lawn or somebody start getting, you know, kicking money in because they're getting announced here. I don't need to get some big expensive name brand. I got the off brand. What's the difference? The difference is you'll find that there's weeds mixed in with that good seed. And so I go out and I spread that cheap seed and then I'm surprised when amongst the grass I get lots of weeds growing up. Who's that on? That's on me, right? I wasn't willing to do what I needed to do. The point is, there are consequences for our decisions. I made the decision to buy that cheap grass seed. The consequences are that I have weeds I'm going to have to deal with. It's on me. The same thing is true in our lives. I made a bad decision. I've got consequences for that bad decision that I am going to have to deal with. I'm going to have to deal with those weeds until harvest time. What's harvest time? I look at harvest time as the time when the fruit of our lives is ready. It's ready to be picked. When the fruit so overwhelms the weeds that we stop looking at the weeds and we see how beautiful the fruit is that's come out of our lives. We need to be looking for the fruit and not looking for the weeds. Um, Bottom line is ultimately those weeds are going to become irrelevant and hard to even see. It's kind of like selective memory. Is there anybody in here who has selective memory? Okay, let me, let me ask it this way. Are there any women in here who have had more than one child? Okay. Let me just say this. Yes, and you're going to... I'm not going to say that. <laughs> let me just say this. Women, you have advised us men how painful childbirth is. And if you were to look at the pain of childbirth, how many would sign up for a second child? Oh, my. I'm hurting just thinking, okay? 
We would have families with one child. But no, they see the fruit of that process. They get to see that child and hold that child. And the fruit overwhelms the pain of the weeds that are childbirth. And as a result, you have more. The point is, we are quick to blame Satan for the weeds in our lives and not so quick to ask ourselves, what's my part in it? Um, I'll get real with you for a minute. There are people who, who are at a job, a church, an organization, and they run into some weeds, all right? They run into weeds of maybe bitterness, resentment, people talking too much, and they can't take it and they leave. And they pick up their bag of cheap grass seed and go to the next place, the next job, the next church, the next organization. And then they get there and they start spreading that cheap seed and they're amazed to see the same weeds growing in that organization. I am not saying there is never a time to leave a bad situation. Not at all. Please don't take it that way. God bless you. Please understand that there are times but there are also times when we're supposed to, in, to look at ourselves and say, hey, is it me or God are you telling me that I'm supposed to go somewhere else? And until you've done that, you need to stand where you are and be counted. Um, sorry if that hurt anyone, I didn't mean to. Uh, so the next verse, we go on. The workers asked, do you want us to pull up the weeds? Once again, how much does that mirror our natural reaction to things in life? Something miserable comes into your life and what do you do? I want it out. I don't want to have to deal with the bad stuff in my life. Get rid of it. The challenge is sometimes we don't know if what we think is a bad thing is really something that God's going to use to grow us up. So we've got to be careful with that. We want to pray that God would take away the weeds in our life when sometimes some of those weeds are things he's going to use to bless us, to take us to the next thing in our life. And if we pray away that thing that we think is a weed and God takes it away, he has to take away the blessing that's associated with it. We need to know that we don't want to just jump the minute something shows up that we don't like and say, get out of my life. You don't know. Mm -mm -mm. Sometimes our first reaction is that prayer. Praying that God would take that thing away. What are we praying? I want to say I've spent my share of time in my valleys. And I, nobody here thinks I have valleys, right? I spent my share of time in the valleys praying God Take this away. I can't deal with this unfair boss anymore. I can't deal with this child who's acting up. Right? It's difficult. But that's our first reaction. I'm guilty of it as well. The sad part is for some people, it's when those weeds start to overwhelm their lives. That's the only time that they stop to have a conversation with God. 
And sometimes the way it goes is, God, here's what I need you to do, and here's how I need it to happen, and here's when I need it to happen, and you got this, God. We're together, right? You're my bro. You got it. I, we're really good at trying to tell God what to do and think we can run it. How many here have ever seen the movie Bruce Almighty? I get laughter. Great movie, okay? And don't get me wrong, do not take your theology from Jim Carrey movies, okay? <laughs> That's a mistake. But in this movie, Jim Carrey plays a character who is complaining about all the bad stuff that's happened in his life. And what does he do? God says, all right, I've heard enough. Calls him for a little, con a little conference, a little powwow, he says, Jimbo, here's the deal. I created this place. I haven't had a day off since. I'm taking a week of vacation. Ball's in your court. You got this. And what's Jim Carrey do? He tries to make everybody happy and give them everything they want. And in the process, the world goes down the tubes. It can't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. Too many times, our prayers are not asking why, they're whining. Too many times, it's not, why is this happening? It's, why is this happening to me? And we need to all grow up and evaluate ourselves. As Christians, we want to believe, hey, things are going to be nice. They're going to be smooth. And we get to wonder why there's so many weeds in our lives at times. But I'm going to suggest this, that we do some self-evaluation, that we kick back, we look at our lives. And from that, we say, all right, what am I doing? And when we do that, sometimes we may come up with this idea that, gee, how did I get so much wheat? We'll be more surprised by the amount of wheat we have in our lives than the weeds we have in our lives. Um, I'll call you to do one thing. When you see a weed, examine your seed. That's on us. The first thing we should look is, are we doing something? And that's not always the case. Don't get me wrong. Not every weed in our life is the result of our own actions. There are things that God is going to throw at us that are not, not of our own making. And we should pray those things away. But we need to know that. So we need to be asking ourselves, God, is there something I need to do? Again, it's back to that whole idea of the cheap seed. Am I willing to pay the price to get the good stuff? Am I willing to pay the price to till up the soil and have it ready for my seed? Am I willing to invest the time to keep my garden clear? Because if I'm not willing to do that, my weeds will continue to grow and I'll be out of it. Verse 29 farmer says, no, you can't pull those up. You'll uproot the weed if you do. How many here have ever weeded a garden? Anybody? Yeah. Best thing to do, get it while the soil's still loose and get it when they're just infant weeds. All right? You get them while they're young. Because if you wait until that weed has grown and developed good roots, those roots are going to wrap around your plants and that's what you're going to end up with. Okay? The challenge is that we don't always know what's wheat and what's weed. <clears throat> wow. I'm going to go on to verse 30 real quickly because to me this was the verse that jumped off the page. And there were four words in that verse that jumped off the page to me. The verse starts with, let both grow together. 
And I saw that, and I'm a guy. I know, I guess I could choose today, but what do I know? <laughs> Sorry, honey, I'm embarrassing you, I know. I'm a guy. My mode of operation is, if there's something out there that's not right, you fix it, okay? You don't wait around. And this can cause a lot of problems in our marriages, can it? Right? The wife comes up to you, oh man, you wouldn't believe what happened at work today. This guy, he said something, he really ticked me off. Hey, no problem, honey, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna beat the crap out of him, it's done. <laughs> She's not looking for us to do that. She just wants to vent. And we want to take action, okay? So we need to understand this. We need to get this idea in our heads. I, that I'm sitting here trying to think, why in the world would the Bible tell me that I should let them grow together? I'm going to tell you a story. This is about a young lady I know. I'm going to first thing tell you, it's no one from this church, okay? So don't look around and try and figure out who it is. Um, but this young lady liked to keep in shape, so she would go running. She liked to exercise. And she was out running one day, and partway through her run, uh, she came to the realization that nature was calling, and she wasn't going to get home. So she went up into the woods and took care of business. And being the clean freak that she is, took some leaves and wiped clean. Less than a week later, she was in the hospital dealing with a severe case of poison ivy in places I can't even imagine. Why did that happen to her? It's because she didn't know the difference between the wheat and the weeds, okay? That same thing happens in our lives. We think we know, but we don't. We can mess it up. I love that story. I wrote here in just little letters, poison ivy wipes. So it's, that told me all I needed to know about that one. In this story, the Greek word for the weed that's there is zizanon. It is also known as the bearded darnel, which the root of that is this darnier, which is a French word. It means to stupefy. It's poisonous. And if you eat it, it can cause you dizziness. It can cause you slurred speech. It can cause you to have vomit and diarrhea. So you really don't want to take a bite into some of this, okay? But here's the tough part. When it starts growing, it looks just like wheat. And you can't tell the difference. So you can't pull it up. That's true in our lives, too, that sometimes we don't know the difference. I, I want to drive this point home. I got another story. My life is funny. Alex, everybody knows my son Alex was the sports guy in our house. His first adventure into sporting was at about four years old, he played soccer at the YMCA. And they put little squares out there, and they put a player from each team in a square. When, when the ball came in, you kicked it your direction. And the ball was not in his square. And so while the ball was in another square, Alex bent down, picked a dandelion, and in the middle of the game, walked off the field over to Mommy and said, here, Mommy. Right? And I hear all the moms out there going, aw, oh, isn't that sweet? And I said, get back on the field! The ball could be coming! <laughs> and I quickly ran to my car because I couldn't take it, okay? <laughs> but this story is not about what a miserable father I was, okay? The intention of this story is this. Alex didn't know the difference 
between a wheat and a weed. And sometimes our weeds are dressed up as pretty flowers. Do we get that? Do we understand this? Because sometimes there are people in our lives who are good to us, but they're not good for us. Are you evaluating that on a regular basis? We need to be keeping an eye on who we're associating with, what we're doing. It's so hard to know the difference between the wheat and the weeds. Um, Julie and I have prayed for our children, as probably all of you have. One of our most frequent prayers is, God, bring Christian role models across their paths. Okay? Because I can say something, and it can go in one ear and out the other. But when somebody else says it, it makes a bigger impact. So that's what we pray for. And most of you in this building here today have heard the story of my son and how he messed up and it cost him being on a state championship baseball team. And I want you to know, if weeds could be the size of giant redwoods, to me, that was a giant redwood weed. It was enormous in my life. And I'm going to tell you that I wasn't doing what I'm telling you today. I was praying that bugger away. God help them to see that he deserves to be back on that team, that he should be there. Don't take this from him. That's what I was doing. The reality is God was using what I thought was a weed to bring a half a dozen Christian men across his path to teach him life lessons that I could never have taught him, that would never have had an impact, but because of the way it happened, his life is changed today because of it, and those things are still planted in him and will affect his life today as well. I've gone through the same thing with promotions at work. I consider that I've been bypassed for promotions at times. Boy, I, I felt like I was letting my family down. Very difficult. But I can look back today and say, that was God growing me up, preparing me for what he had planned for me instead of what I had planned for me. And how many know that's a better plan than mine? I'd like everybody to look back right now. I mean, look back in your life. I don't want you to look back at the victories. I don't want you to look back at the defeats. I want you to look back at the times of growth in your life. And when did they happen? For most of us, we're going to find those big times of growth came about during the times when the weeds were trying to overrun our garden. Amen. When stuff was coming against us is when we saw those victories. I've had people say, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty happy guy. And I've had people say to me, Jeff, you know, if I had your life, I could be happy too. Um... I get that. I understand. I am blessed and highly favored. I know Angie's over there somewhere, I thought. she leave on me? I, I get it. But let me tell you two things. There are still weeds popping up in my life at all the time. Okay? It happens. We choose not to look at the weeds. They're there. We know they're there, but our focus is on the fruit. And because of that, we don't get the pain of dealing with that. I will tell you that as I was preparing this message this week, we had a, a situation with one of our daughters that came up. And I'm just going to tell you, it's a big weed. And I'm not going to share any more about it other than to say... 
We're believing that God has it. It's not our problem to deal with. It's God's to deal with, and we're trusting him. And I can only tell you, and Julie doesn't know this, that I talked to my daughter today because today's her birthday, and I talked to her this morning, and her reaction was, you know, I'm in a much better place now than I was when I talked to you a couple days ago. I know this is going to work out. And I'm sitting there thinking, wow, I've been praying her back into church for so long that my knees are getting sore, but I'm still going to be there praying her back in. And because of where she is right now, Christian people in the most unlikely places have been brought across her path in the public schools, okay? It's amazing to me that she shows up at a public school and a teacher for her son says, you know, I'm a Christian. I went through something like what you're going through and I'm here for you. God has me here for you. You don't hear that in the public schools a lot and I'm thankful that God is speaking to her in that way. Um, The last thing about that is, is this. Sure, somebody might want to live my life today. They're 63 years into the movie that is my life. Okay? They haven't looked back at the first 63 years. Okay? I'm just going to say this, that there's only one person in this room who knew me Transparency stinks sometimes. There's only one person in this room who knew me when I was living alone in a studio apartment, pretty depressed about where my life had gone. Who knew me when my daughter, my my ex-wife took my daughter to Florida. I've gone through stuff, we all have. And sadly, sometimes people want to come into your life where it is today, but not understand that you've been there. You've gone through some of these things. And we all need to recognize that it's a process. So, Jeff, the title of the message is A Paradox of the Wheat and the Weeds. Where's the paradox? The paradox is this. The wheat and the weeds are both have to grow together, okay? And it's a question of where your focus is. How do I know they have to grow together? Not just because I've lived it. It's because the scripture tells me that, all right? I can look at Jesus. Jesus had the ultimate opportunity. He got to pick his dream team. Right? He got to pick his 12. He could have picked anybody on the planet that he wanted. Heck, he could have made somebody to fill the spot he needed on his team. He got to pick them all. And look who he picks. He picks John. Sure. John, the one that Jesus loved. At least that's what he called himself. Right? And sure you pick John. Why? He's at the foot of the cross when Jesus is being crucified. He's there to take care of Jesus' mother when he's gone. That's an easy, that's like picking Michael Jordan for your basketball team. That's an easy one. But he picked Judas, the one who betrayed him. Why? He needed both to fulfill his destiny. He needed both. There's a lot of other stories about that in the scriptures, okay? We can look at Paul. Paul had his thorn in the flesh. He prayed, God, take this away three times. God didn't take it away. He must have needed it. There are countless Christians who've been thrown in prison for the sake of the gospel. It's not easy. So Jeff, what's the point of the message? I'm going to give you a few quick points, and then I'll be done. And I know I stand between you and pie, and that's really uncomfortable, especially when some of you are so much bigger than me. (laughs) Um, 
First thing, don't pray away all the challenges in your life. You don't know which ones God's going to use to grow you up, to develop you, and to prepare you for the next thing he has for you. So don't jump to the conclusion that you're supposed to pray away weeds. Find out whether that weed is from the devil or of your own making. Love your enemies isn't just a nice thing to say. Guess what? It could be that person that you think is an enemy who's going to deliver you to your destiny. You don't know. Be prepared. Focus on embracing the fruit, the fruit, the wheat, okay? Don't spend our time looking at all the bad stuff that's going on. Focus on the fruit. Know that there is a harvest coming. Don't stop sowing. I can't emphasize that enough. There is so many of us when the tough times hit, we want to curl up into a little ball and stop getting out there. We need, especially when the weeds seem to be overwhelming us, that's when we need to get out there and sow some of that seed, okay? This story we have, for the most part, talked about somebody planting weeds in our wheat field. Know that some of us are called to be wheat in a weed field. Your job could be filled with weeds. You're there for a reason. You're there for a purpose. Don't run away from that purpose. Stand up and let your fruit be seen when you're in that weed field. Last but not least, God said this. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. You go to the store, you buy a seed packet. On that seed packet, there's something there that tells you what's to grow because many times you could look at the seed and you wouldn't know what it's going to bring you, right? I believe that God has a seed packet with your picture on it. He's got something up there. He knows what you're called to become. The bottom line is our seed was created so that we would bear much fruit. That's why we're there. We were not created to spend our lives fighting against the weeds. So we have a choice to make. Where is my focus? Am I going to focus on the weeds or am I going to focus on the fruit? We're going to have both. Why focus on the weeds? We know the ending. We know how this story ends. God is going to remove the weeds and the fruit is going to shine through. So let's not focus on the weeds in our lives. Sometimes we want to spend that time. We look at the weeds and what happens? We invest that time in focusing on the weeds. Our fruit's not going to develop the way it's supposed to. And in the end, we're going to look around and we're going to ask ourselves, did I redeem the time? Did I make good use of what you gave me? Or did I allow my looking at the weeds to prevent me from reaching my potential? The bottom line is this. We need to focus on the fruit. Because if we do that, and we deal with the fruit in our life, we're going to be blessed, those around you are going to be blessed, and the kingdom of God will be blessed as well. With that, I want to pray over everyone, and then we're going to go get some pie. And don't get in the way of the door, or the big people will run you over. <laughs> Father, I thank you for your word. Your word is as true today as it always was. Lord, I pray that we would be quick to look at ourselves and recognize 
our part in our lives. That we would be quick to lean to you for guidance and understanding, knowing that you have our best in mind. So, Father, I thank you for both the wheat and the weeds in my life, and that you will use them to take me to where you would have me. I pray that in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. amen.